In this segment of the video series in preparing for the NKBA certification exam, we're going to take a look at the process of annotating, dimensioning, and putting notes on your floor plan. On your screen right now is a finished result. We're going to go through and add the text for the callouts, the dimensions, and then also other annotations for the ceiling height and the flooring material. Let's go ahead and open up the plan and get started. The first step is to create the floor plan dimensions. I want to make sure that I'm using the floor plan layer set and the floor plan annotations. And just as a reminder, on the PDF you can find at chiefarchitect.com slash NKBA is a matrix with the recommended layer sets and annotation sets creating your exam using this template file. I'm going to use the automatic dimensions. Click inside the room. It will highlight. In the lower left hand section of your menu, you'll see a tool called Automatic NKBA Dimensions. Click that and it's going to place the dimensions the best it can. Then we'll just have to do a little bit of cleanup. First of all, since we have a different wall type over here, it's only dimensioned to that break in the wall. I'm going to go ahead and select the diamond and I'm going to just pull it to the end of the wall. That way it is going end to end. Next, I'll select the dimension tool, come to the outside of this wall and run a dimension string along the outside of the wall. And when I did that, it picked up the center point of this cabinet. I'm just going to go ahead and pull that off. And then for the outside dimension, maybe pull it down just a little bit, select the extension lines and pull that down so there's no gap in between the extension lines. One more dimension to clean up on this string. I'm going to pull it off of the cabinet. Then I'm going to go and take a look at this dimension string down here. This one looks okay. The center line dimensions look pretty good. I'm going to select the center line itself and I'm going to pull that into at least into the wall and I'll do that on those components and we'll go ahead and pull that in. Select the outside dimension, pull that out a little bit for the center line dimension on this. I want to pull this dimension out so that it's a little bit more legible. It says eight and a half inches. If I zoom in, I'm going to go ahead. It looks like it's not quite going to the center line of that. I'm going to go ahead and pull that over and go ahead and pull that in. I'm also going to open up this existing wall elevation we did earlier and verify that it's correct. I'll double click on it, take a look, make sure that that also is 10 inches. That looks correct. Let's go back to the floor plan view and I'm going to select the extension lines again, get the end of it, pull it down so there is no gap in there. On the bottom dimension string for the center lines, again I'm going to select the extensions. I'm going to pull it at least to the inside of the wall. Some people like to pull that actually into the object itself. That looks pretty good. And then finally on the dimension string on the right, zoom in and it's missed the wall itself. I may or may not need that, but I'm going to go ahead and add that dimension. Simply click on the dimension, you'll see an extra diamond appear and then drag that where you want it. It looks like most of my dimensions are pretty good. I'm probably going to use my crosshairs and go around and make sure all of my extension lines line up on each side of the wall and I like to spend quite a bit of time verifying it. It's pretty easy to overlook something. Between the video segment when I paused it I noticed that I missed this center line and pulled it, had not pulled it in. So it's always a good idea to spend a little bit of time and verify those dimensions. The next step is to put your cabinet notes in there. It's required that typically each cabinet, certainly any specialty cabinet, needs a note on the cabinet. The way I like to do that is to typically just use a call out and place a call out and let's go ahead and give it a number one and I'll make notes during reading the scenario maybe I'll put this into a Google Doc or Microsoft Word and then just paste it in here this text and then as I go through grab that call out I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna place that call out over there make sure that in this case pantry vertical tray has the text and the call out marker associated with it and I'll try to have somewhat of an order to it in the case that I did down here, I broke out my appliances because when I wrote my notes down, I just kind of kept separate notes for the appliances. So I started my numbering after my last component in the cabinets. Once you have your call out, I'll usually just use the copy command and pull that over to the next object. In this case, it's the desk. So I'll just slide it over using the copy tool allows me to keep the same alignment. If that's important, you just double click on that, open it up, put a number two in there, and then you can kind of proceed and go ahead and spread the rest of your callouts through there. I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead and place all of those callouts just using the copy tool and making sure that then they match up with these notes. I place the rest of those notes. The text object that I have in here is actually a rich text object. If you open up the template plan, let me slide out a little bit. I just created a copy of this and slid it over there. When you open up the template plan, I've included some notes in there. If you want to create your own, 
I've used the rich text object coming in here, clicking rich text, and this is how I did it. I just said, uh, let's just call it legend, and then you just start putting your notes in here. One, you type the information out. I'm using three inches for my text, my specifications here. When I send that out at a half inch scale, that should work out to about an eighth of an inch on the layout sheet, and that's usually what they recommend. For the title here, I'll probably go ahead and bump that up to be something like four inches. When you have this text box open, you can easily paste, if you formatted something from your Word document or your Google Docs document, you can easily paste that in there. One of the challenges with the floor plan and your floor plan specification notes is really making it fit on your layout sheet. A lot of times the exam scenarios make it very difficult to fit it all on there. I'm going to go ahead and send this out to the layout sheet. I've opened up my layout, my sample layout, and I'm going to send this out again at half inch scale, and I'm going to send it to page 3, which is the plan file that we've set up at a half inch. Send that out there, and I'm going to click on the viewport. It's very difficult oftentimes to get this. I don't want my dimensions to step on the line over here. You can see how close we are over here, and it becomes a bit of a challenge when you're doing your exam to make this fit on there. I'm going to back up just a little bit. There is another way to create your floor plan specifications and your callouts. You can create a cabinet schedule, which is actually the typical way that I might do this for a commercial job. Underneath your CAD tool, I go to CAD Detail Management. I put my cabinet schedule in a CAD detail. I'm just going to add a new detail in here, and I'm going to call it Cabinet Schedule. This creates a workspace. In this area, I'm going to come into my schedules, and then I'm going to isolate a cabinet schedule. Go ahead and place that cabinet schedule. When I place the schedule and I go back into the floor plan, it replaced the nomenclature with these callouts. So you can use that as your callout, but it places one for every single cabinet, and oftentimes I do find difficulty in getting all of the text in there. You can modify this cabinet schedule. Let me open this up and you can actually modify this. For example, if you want to change the label, maybe you don't want a C on there for this. So you can remove the C out there. If you want it as a call out, you can basically control the text size of that call out. Let me go ahead and resize that down to maybe uh, 12. See what that looks like. And then in general, you can control the way the attributes for this cabinet commercial job, I might add the 3D perspective of that, move that to the top, and then I might remove some of the other components that aren't necessarily needed in here. I'll just click remove on some of those. You can then see a preview of it. When I go back to the floor plan, you can see those callouts. I ended up making them six in diameter when I changed that. And here are all the callouts. You can then reorganize those callouts back in the schedule by simply clicking on these and moving them down and changing them around. So that's how you control the ordering of where the cabinets go. So that's another approach. You could use this schedule and on your callouts, you could then use those callouts on your cabinet schedule. If you did create a schedule and you want to go back to nomenclature, back into the schedule, if you open this back up, there's an option here to use callout schedule or for the label. Just unselect that. When you go back into the floor plan, it will then return back to the nomenclature you originally had. So a couple options for you. Here's a picture of a commercial job. If you want to use your cabinet schedule, it makes it look a little bit differently. Also, here's my bath. There's quite a bit of information you can put on your layout sheets. Of course, this is actually a 24 by 36 sheet. And in your exam, you're limited to 11 by 17. I've switched my nomenclature back to the typical nomenclature and then used just the callouts that I placed by using the callout tool and that way I've just isolated to those cabinets that I want to call out. Next I'm going to use the text tool and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type in a 108 inch ceiling. You're required to put your ceiling height in your design. Also you're required to put your pattern in here for your flooring. Maybe there's tile in the bathroom or hardwood in the kitchen. One quick way to do it if you're in a big hurry is just use the line tool, W on the keyboard, and just draw a series of lines for your hardwood. And it's very quick to do that. Maybe I'll just draw some random lines in here. You can connect it, show the pattern, and that's one quick way to do it. Another way, if I delete that, this may take a little bit more time. I like to do this for commercial jobs. You can save this in your library and reuse it. It may be a good idea for the exam if you like this. I've drawn out just a CAD box here, a rectangular polyline. I'm going to select that and open it up. And in the fill style, we can come in here and give it a custom pattern. And down here in the pattern file, let's go out and browse and find a pattern file. There is a flooring pattern file that you can choose. And inside of there, once you've got that selected, you can click on the drop down here and choose the different 
styles. Here's one called Wood 3. You can select that. I'm going to go ahead and set the spacing of it down just a little bit. And then on the color of it, I'm going to tone that down. I'm going to use a lighter gray on it. And on the line style as well, let me go ahead and put a transparent background in case that's on top of it. On the line style, that's very dark and it's controlled by the layer. If I want to not control it by the layer, I could change that. But in actuality, I'm going to remove the line style off of that because I'm going to show you how to reshape this. I'm going to find just a blank line in here. And now I can reshape this wood pattern. And you can kind of control the way it shapes. And sometimes I'll kind of, depending on what it is, make it a little bit more artistic. And then you can move this around. This allows you to then create a different shape for your pattern. And it's one option to do it. Again, if you're in a hurry, just use the line tool on the keyboard. And you can do that. This rectangular polyline, the fill style, setting it to custom, browsing out, finding a tile pattern or a brick pattern makes it all so easy. And I actually like to use this for my commercial jobs, give it a little bit more artistic look. Now I'm just going to pull these two things down in this area. My ceiling height was 108. You've seen that in the wall elevations. Again, if you double click on the room and underneath the structure panel, the finished ceiling when you do your elevations is listed right here. It's 108. That's where that comes from. And if you have different ceiling heights, maybe there's another wall in here that creates a different room. You could have two different ceiling heights. That's where you could set it. I may have a 108 ceiling over here, maybe 96 or 120 on the other side. And you can easily then just take that text and retype it or copy it over there and make the appropriate adjustment. You may be required to show some furniture or some seating in your design. In this case, I'm going to open up the library. I'm going to browse down from the core catalog into the interiors, into furniture and seating, and I'm going to find a couple of stools. I'm just going to use a basic stool here and place those in the design, and we'll just place a couple of those. If you want to show those in the height, we'll just double click on both of those. You can specify what the height of those, or you can do a call out. You may need to do that. You can set the height in there. In this requirement, there was a need for having a seating table there. I can go into the dining tables. I can find an existing configuration. You can grab that. You can then place it in the design. You can unblock that and then make the appropriate adjustments in there. And that way, if you need to dimension to it, you can dimension to it and add the details you need for the design. Let me close the library browser. Let's go back over to the layout sheet that we've sent this to. Let's take a look and see what we have. Notice that I have the floor plan text down here that has the floor plan at half inch scale. I want to make sure that my dimensions are not on the title block or on the boundary border over here. I want to make sure that the text off to the side over here is not in the border as well. And again, I want to be very specific. I'm making sure all of the dimensions look right. Double checking my notes to make sure that the notes match up with a call out. And that's the process of creating your floor plan. And what I've done here is I've used the automatic dimensions to place the dimensions. I then cleaned them up, added a few of the additional dimensions that weren't placed. I then used the rich text tool, typed up the cabinet specifications and notes, used the callout tool, and then place those callouts along the cabinet boxes and the appliances. And then finally, I placed the ceiling height and the material for the flooring in there, and then a few furniture items.